Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We have come. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. To say thank you. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Because, Lord, you say, give, up, give thanks to you for everything. So, Lord, we just come to say thank you for waking up us this morning. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Sometimes we take it for granted that Hallelujah. we didn't go yes, to sleep Lord. and wake up. Thank you, thank you, thank you, but Lord. Sometimes there are yes, other people who go to sleep and don't wake up. Yes, Lord. But we just come to say thank you. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. The song record says, He touched me. Yes, Lord. He says, Shackled by heaven and burning, not a load of yes. guilt and shame. Yes. He said, Then the hands of Jesus touched, touched me. me. Yes, thank you. So, Lord, it's your hands. That touch us that we wake up in this morning. Yes, yes. Lord. He said, I was sinking deep in sin. Yes. Far from the peaceful shore. Yes. Very deeply stained within. Yes, Lord. Sinking to rise no yes, more. Yes, Hallelujah. For the master of the sea. Yes, Lord. I am a despairing cry. Yes, Lord. From the waters he lifted me. Yes, Lord. Now see, I am. So we just come, Heavenly Father. As a songwriter said, through it all. Yes, Lord. Lord. Through it all. I like to trust, trust in, in Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, there's some of who have not heard your name today. Yes. Through it all, we'll like to trust in Jesus. Oh, we heard a testimony from Pastor. For this man, he has, he has ministered to three years. Yes, Lord. But now, he has learned to trust in Jesus. Yes, Lord. So we love, we said through it all. Yes, Lord. He knew that he felt. Yes, Lord. And he knew that someone was there to help pick him up. Yes, Lord. Oh, he only wanted to hear whether there was someone there to help him. Because he said no one was there to pick him up. But when he heard that, yes, Jesus was there. Yes, Lord. So he learned to trust in Jesus. Yes, Lord. We just come, Heavenly Father. We pray for hearts. To yes. say thank you this morning. Yes, Lord. Thank Hallelujah. you for those that are not here this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, if they are sick, Hallelujah. we say you're a healer, Heavenly Father. Heal them, Heavenly Father. Those that Hallelujah. we say guide them. Hallelujah. Lead them. Yes, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father. Yes. We just present Bill to you. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. We say touch him. We say thank you. Yes. Hallelujah. We present Christine to you, Lord. Yes. Well, we know sometimes she's up, sometimes she's down. Sometimes she's almost level with the ground, but you are there to pick her up. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Be with normal Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. We have not seen him for a while. Yes, Lord. But I know yes. you are taking care of him. Yes, Lord. Lord, thank you will touch him, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. And continue to heal him, Lord. Be with each and every one of us who are sick today, Lord. Yes, Lord. Sometimes we are sick and we don't know Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Yeah, we are sick. We say, be with us, Lord. Yes, yes. Lord. We will travel and his family, Lord. Yes, Lord. They are not here today, Lord. Yes, but wherever Lord. they are, we say, guide them. Yes, yes Lord. Yes. Protect them. Yes. Lead them. Thank you, Lord. Have mercy on us, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Have mercy on us, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes. Lord, be with those oh, yes. that are in eternity. Yes, Lord. We say, touch our president. Yes, Lord. And those in eternity. Yes, Lord. Lord, continue to guide him. Yes, Lord. Oh, continue to lead him. Yes, Lord. Continue to let him know that only you and beside you, there's none other. Yes, Lord. Lord, I'm still praying for him, Lord. When he comes to the plan, Barrow, plan, uh, parent who? Yes, I, I pray, Heavenly Father, yes, that he gave that to the Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Guide Thank him. you, Lord. Hallelujah. And be with us. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Be with Liberia, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. In the name. Be with those that are dead, Lord. Thank you. Oh, we know it's not easy there. But Lord, you are there. Yes, Lord. You are there, Heavenly Father. You are there to continue to guide us. Yes, Lord. You are there to continue to lead us. Oh, have mercy on us, Lord. Yes. Lord. Have mercy on us, Lord. Forgive us, Heavenly Father, for our trespasses, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord. Jesus. Forgive us. As we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Have mercy, Lord. There's nothing we can we have done. Yes, Lord. That Hallelujah. To allow you to listen to us. With our filtered lips and filtered tongues, yes. Yes, you still listen to us. Yes, but we say, Lord, thank you. Yes, thank Lord. You. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Be with this 
this group, Heavenly Father. Yes, yes, Lord. Continue to keep us closer and closer together, Lord. Yes. Continue to grow up closer to you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. That we go out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just said, We'll go out, we'll not be ashamed to Hallelujah. tell somebody that Jesus loves Yes, Lord. Yes. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, that we can say it. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That we can praise you, Lord. Yes, Lord. That we can glorify you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Because you are, you are wanted to be praised. Yes, Lord. Yes, you are the Alpha, you are the Omega. Yes, Lord. Oh, you are going out and you are coming in. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord, Hallelujah. there's none like you. Yes. There's none like you. So we say, have my still house. Ask my still house. Lord, as you speak to your people today, yes, Lord. we say, be what the one that you have chosen to bring your word. Yes. Touch him, Heavenly Father. Guide him. Yes. Lead him yes. and his wife. That you will continue to be his lifting up. Let him continue to be in good health, Heavenly Father. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. That he will lead us. That he will continue yes, to Lord. know that with all you, there is none other. Amen. Thank you, Lord. But oh Lord, not our will. Let your will be done. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One thing I forgot to tell was, we have about 600 tracks. You know. They're all in Spanish. Como ser salvo, right? How to receive salvation. And uh, somebody loves you. All in Spanish. And uh, I believe this is El Camino de Romanos, Roman Road, right? We got them all here, 600 of them. And uh, they were beautiful people. You can take everybody a few tracks at the end of the service if you want to. And if you know some Spanish speaking people, and uh, you know how to sometimes it is easier to give a tract to them and ask them to read it. Yes. And then you keep praying for them. You know, until next Thanksgiving season. Yes. Pray for them and thank God for them. And then I can guarantee they will come to Christ, like John Scalero yes. last Wednesday evening. I think that's always something. Each time I ran into him, whether outside here, in spite of, outside, anywhere, I always, he would always ask me, you know, have you seen the man of Nazareth? <laughs> I told him, yes, he is inside my heart. Yes. And that day, I ended, ended the conversation shaking hands with him. And, John, today the man of Nazareth is in your heart. Yes, man. <laughs> Took three years. Praise the Lord. Yes, man. No, we are just vessels used by God. Yes. I think of myself like Barabbas. <laughs> I mean Barabbas. Who was going to be crucified? If you look at the the tradition behind Barabbas. He was hearing from the, the Praetorium, the Roman Court of Justice, and uh, people were shouting outside, yes. crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Imagine the hopeless situation for Barabbas, because he was an insurrectionist. He was the the worst and robber, burglary, not burglary. Uh, you know, uh, there is a word for it. We call them stealing. Sometimes people steal without a motive, no? yeah. without a need. No? Yeah. It's called kleptomania. You, know? you call them, you know, the English language. I memorized all these terminologies long time ago. Yeah. Pyromania, kleptomania, and megalomania. I'm more important than anybody else, and that's megalomania. So it's a mania. That's why the term maniac. So kleptomania is stealing for the sake of stealing. Like um, intended, intended stealing is robbery. You intend to steal, but with the force, violence. That's a different, that is robbery. I read about uh, in Los Angeles a couple of places. Yes. Eight or sixteen, eight or twelve people went. Just a normal people went there, stole a lot of things, and uh, same thing was happening in uh, Chicago, in Minneapolis, 
and uh, three, you know, random here and there, some of these stores, you know. And this one particular store, the, the, someone thought that there is a robbery going on here. They were taking all the sledgehammers and all the big, big tools, you know. And they were heading toward the door. You know. So the gentleman was closing the door. You know. And he said, wait a minute, this is what you are going to get. And I can see him lifting the hammer. You know. That's the way they all made their way out. Four people had been arrested. You know. That was on the Black Friday. You know. Can you believe that? And Saturday morning. You know. So that's the day before yesterday and yesterday. But anyhow, so all these things are happening. You know. The robbery with an intent to kill it. One way or the other, I'm going to get it. So Barabbas was a robber. He was able to burglarize and kill and take the things that he could afford to take them away. At some point in time, he was caught and put in the prison. Now his end is coming in. And he knew it. You will be one of the three robbers on the cross. And I don't know whether he was praying. We don't know anything about it. But suddenly what happened? He didn't know him. Yeah, God came to release him. What do you mean? He must have been begging, sir, please don't do that. I have a family. We don't know how that encounter happened. And he told, the prison guard told him, you are free. Free? To go home? Yes. 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 Somebody else is carrying your cross. The people chose not the king of kings and the lord of lords, but they chose you to go, you know. Who are these people? The religious leaders, the scribes and everybody else. They chose, they instigated the people when Pilate was determined to let him go, you know, I find no fault in him. And yet, he, he could not control the crowd, you know, the mob psychology. You know. Yet, we have a custom here, you know, customary practice to once a year, you know, practice to release a prisoner. You know. And he is a would-be prisoner, Jesus. And he's already caught, and he's, he's, he is uh, scourged, beaten up and all that. A head of, you know, a crown of thorns is placed upon him, and they beat him up, he was bleeding. But, can I release this man, you know, who is your king? You know? Oh, we have no king but Caesar. I have to release one of the two. You know? Do you want me to release your Messiah, the king, you know? No, not this man, but Barabbas. Barabbas. So I think of myself as Barabbas, bound to be crucified for my sins, because we are all condemned sinners. No one is without guilty. Everybody is a sinner. Not because of anything other than the fact that we were born with that sinful nature. So we are in the, in the sight of God, guilty and condemned. Yes. Although we have some good in, in each one of us, right? Shakespeare himself put it in one of the plays, you know. I believe it's uh, As You Like It, you know. Years ago I read it. This lovers, they found uh, everywhere they went, you know. Sermons in stones, you know. books in the running brooks. You know and good in everything. You know. They found good in everything. You know. That's why they were happy all along. You know. Without you know, nitpicking and finding fault with others. That's the way Shakespeare puts those two characters. Okay, I believe one of them is Rosalind and her husband or lover is Hermia. I can't think of the name, don't quote it. Her boyfriend or fiance. Can you believe that? Anyway, it slipped out of my mind. But anyway, these were the people, Hermia, I believe, but fine, that's fine. So the burglar or the robber is a very significant term. 
and the word that is you know i went into the trouble of looking up all the greek dictionaries and uh, and so on and so forth which i always do you know today early morning it struck me you know jesus said the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy you know so let's say what john which word that john uses in gospel of john 10 10 and you know, the same word you know. that word is the robber you know. the robber he comes to steal and also to do violently kill to get his situation i see all those who are condemned already they follow satan and so on and so forth but what is ultimately going to happen to them they are going to be dragged into hell that is the purpose of satan and it is unbelievable unbelievable how people fall a victim to it they do not know what they are doing I read the story of a wonderful Methodist uh, gentleman. It was a great story. It really blessed me. I want to say a few things about it. And uh, I never knew this before. And I said, well, thank you, Lord. You, you have me read this story. And this gentleman, his name is Billy Bray. B R A by Billy Bray. He lived between 1794 to 1868. That's the time of his and uh, he was a, you know he's known for his joyous singing dancing preacher. You no. Know? <laughs> All on a sudden you'll get a kind of a uh, mood to sing and dance. I can't do that because I understand it. <laughs> and he was he was so joyful he could not contain his joy you know so he went around dancing and singing you know but when he was a young man for 10 years what did he do you know drinking and drugs i don't know whether they were there the riotous living riots you know typical modern american teenager you know in most places you know then he was a miner you know M I N E R minor mines were the most dangerous places to work you know? mm. right when something slips and they are dead you know? we read about in chile how the miners escaped and so on and it's very rarely they bring them alive you know? very hard to get them out you know? now there was an accident he narrowly escaped you know? he, just, he was close to death you know? have you ever seen people close to death i have been there a few times so this he was very close to death then that made him think just like john scalaro you know he fell down what would have happened you know? i buried him brian's brother you know? he dropped down dead four days nobody knew what happened you, know? you never know then there was another high school teacher he dropped down dead you know? then there was another lu he dropped down dead in the recent cases the past 3 months you know, i know i witnessed all of them you know. at least lu that's the one you encountered remember he was talking about the mask he's gone you know. that's the last time i talked to him you know. and we gave the gospel many many times but anyhow this made him think about what's going to happen you know. from the eternal standpoint what is going to happen you know. he made him think something made him think i think it was the work of the holy spirit you know what matters most from the eternal perspective that was the question you know then he read john bunyan's not pilgrim's progress you know. i read that book not there was another book grace abounding to sinners you know. there was another beautiful book you, know. you guys want to read books you know please read these books you know. one of the finest books you know but he also wrote several other books about 40 of them you know. one is a beautiful book called visions of heaven and hell you know. visions of heaven and hell you know. that reflects his own um, story of his early life you know. when he was thinking about his riotous living and this and that you know, you know he talks about how in that in that chapter it was a reflection of john bunyan himself you know? 
He was afraid of the bell when it rang you know, in the churches because it was a death toll for him to go to hell. You know. Because, you know, something was missing in his life. You know. Now he was talking about in this book. Look, you talk to atheists, they feel something is missing you know, in the beginning. You know. Then they say there is no God. You know. They make themselves say that. You know. They know right and wrong, but they want to do the wrong thing. You know. So they convince themselves that there is no morality. I can do whatever I want to do. I have my right to do it. And so on and so forth. Encouragement is everywhere. Then what about God? You know? I, I don't think so. There is God. You know? Because they don't want to be morally righteous. They don't want to do the right thing. You know? Then ultimately they become really full-fledged atheists. Then something speaks to them. See, I have made myself a worthless life. You know? Let me end it all. You know? Some of them are driven to that. You know, to kill themselves. You know. So this happened to him. You know, and um, he was able to see that. You know. And then after he read that, he gave his heart to Christ. You know. Now the new life is on. As I always say here, the old life is gone. And he became very, very active in the Methodist church. You know, very active. And he gave the gospel to everybody he met. You know. He couldn't wait to share the gospel story to everybody you know, so that people could be saved. You know. At that time in England, no one could equal his ability and stamina to preach the gospel with that vigor and humor he spoke you know, with. You know. That is, everybody is gifted with something, you know, your style. You know. That was his style. You know. And no one could be a better humorous but theologically strong man of God. You know. And here he was. He preached that message. And in 1957, you know, that's the one I was talking about, Raymond Fox. Raymond Cox, I'm sorry. He was a well-known educator representing the Four Square International Church. You know. I preached in a few of them in New Jersey. They're beautiful people. And he was a, uh, he talked about the God-given ability for this man of God, uh, Billy Bray. He talked about it, how he kept praising God and he was able to draw people to Christ. You know. Then one of the answers that this Billy Gray, Billy Bray gave to a believer, hey, what makes you always talk about Jesus? And you are praising God always. You know. And he said, look, I bless the Lord constantly. You know. I bless the Lord constantly because my whole life is brightened, you know. you know, it become enlightened by praising God. His own quotes, you know. The more I praise the Lord, the more I become brightened on the inside. You know. Everything is like sunshine on the inside. In the more an American way we say it, you know. Oh, talking to him is a breath of sunshine. You know. People say that, you know. So, then one guy said to him, yeah, even when you were walking in the street, you praise the Lord so loud. Why do you praise the Lord so loud? Some people do that. Hallelujah! <laughs> That's fine. They do that in the coliseums, in the theaters, in football. When people go for watching a football game or something, they get ovation. You don't know to whistle and all that, but you can be delighted to say something. So why are you praising God so loud? You know? He said, look, when I lift one foot, you know, I, 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 I lift my, let's say, left foot. I lift my one foot, the left foot. I say, glory. Then when I lift the other foot, it, I seem to say, amen. <laughs> Each time you take one foot, he say, glory. The other foot, I say, amen. And I keep on doing it when I keep walking. You know. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Glory. Amen. So he kept going. You know. And he was so ignited on the inside, enlightened. You know. So this Raymond Fox commented about him. You know. He represented a cheerful Christianity. Happy people. You know. He is one of those happy people. 
and he was able to minister to people who were in you know in in downtrodden lifestyle people who have nothing and he was able to minister to them and bringing hope to the hopeless that was his essence you know and those who were suffering he gave them you know. so this is where the excellent quote you know he was praising uh, this uh, raymond cox said about this man you know. praising god for our blessings extends them you know. when we praise god for our blessings what happens blessings get extended you know. praising god for our blessings extends them you know. god extends his blessings you know. praising god for our troubles you know. what happens that will end them you know. a beautiful quote I'll use it many, many many times Raymond L Cox said it about this man Billy Bray in that context praising god for our blessings extends them praising god for our troubles will end them so if you keep praising god during your blessed occasions blessing blessed times you keep extending you know, god's blessings you know. in other words a continuation of his blessings when he praise god for the good things you know. what about when he praise god for the bad things you know? god will end them he will stop it you know. blessed be the name thank you lord now let's turn to the gospel of john let's read a few scriptures from there soon we will be finishing this book of john i thought of you know barabbas I was thinking about it all this week and collecting information after information look at this I am the barabbas that Jesus died for I am the one who was supposed to be crucified but what Jesus did for me was the best he could do in the 18th chapter the last scripture they all cried again saying not this man but Barabbas now Barabbas was a robber 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 is a powerful terminology used and uh, i was looking at several passages in the original languages he's not just a regular thief no? not a regular thief but he was a robber no? he could also be motivated to kill no? and destroy exactly like satan and satan inspired people and you know they rape they kill and do all other things you know so i was looking at the word in how the gospel writers use that word you know i look for in matthew 27 uh, 38 and the greek word that is used is less toy you know, less toy which means the robber you know. then that's the same word john uses too you know. then you go to the etymology of some of these things you know and the one word is most important i i knew the long time ago less toss less toss which means you have to have an intent to kill even if it comes to killing to take away your stuff that you want there are people who kill them just for a couple of dollars right so they are robbers and they are robbers that's the way judas was that's the way the he was a robber too judas he was a son of perdition although judas was a thief you know? not in the he didn't kill he was a thief that's a correct word for judas you know? but he was condemned because of his denial of well anyway he chose satan you know, instead of christ you know. now so john uses that in his analogy in, in the gospel of john here robber the same word lestos is being used you know and it came from several other words i went into all this but you don't need to remember any of it just this one word you know, lestos which means originally a robber a robber means he kills he steals not with the sake of for the sake of stealing 
but with an intended murderous plot if you don't give it i'm going to kill you that is a robbery and it also the same word is used for so many other ways to explain it and it is a very important word we have to think plunderer a plunderer a robber a thief of the worst kind and put it that way now barabbas escaped to physical death right because of jesus being picked up instead of barabbas according to tradition he cried looking at the cross that christ carried it is my cross it is my cross it's my cross that's why when people talk to you i always used to say i never know that it is my sins that put jesus on the cross i never thought of that that way until i got saved after i got saved who killed jesus me my sins killed him i killed jesus so i am the robber i am the robber supposed to supposedly to be on the cross look at it that way you can call yourself a thief or a robber pilot so this barabbas was supposed to be at this middle of the three uh, three crosses you know? one on the left and one on the right according to luke 2333 you know? there were two thieves you know? one on the left and one on the left one on the right you know? so barabbas was supposed to be in the middle you know? or doesn't matter which side you know? or torture to death right doesn't matter which side whether left or right or middle you are going to be killed but barabbas missed it he escaped physical torture and death because in his place jesus took that position you know, of being considered a robber you know. so jesus was not a robber but he took all of our sins and everything according to isaiah 53 you know, yes. and he bore them all on the cross of calvary so that i a farmer barabbas could be a liberated barabbas you know. in that amazing a liberated sinner saved sinner like john newton sang you know amazing grace set him free you know. and very very important thing you know very very important thing the lord jesus set me free you know. so now when you look at one of the other two thieves too you know, and it's a very important scripture i would like you to remember that jesus said it you know, today you will be with me in paradise you know. yes. and very important scripture you got to remember when you read all about the cross one of the thieves he said look what did this man do you know we are condemned for the right reason you know your robber is able to see that you know? this man is innocent you know? i don't know why would they put him on the cross you know? then he turned to jesus lord remember me, remember me you know, when he come to paradise you know? and jesus said verily verily i say unto you, you know, today you will be with me in paradise you know? today so jesus skipped purgatory and everything in between because it is man made doctrine when you die to depart and to be with christ because there is no mediator between god and man but the man jesus christ he is the only one who can mediate you know that is why it happened you know and you know when you read let's read some of the scriptures so 19th chapter it talks about how pilot did what he did crucifixion was going to happen and so on now jesus is on the cross and you know every scripture you know, all these scriptures if you read them on your own but later on we will read them at the bible study thursday night but those who don't come you got to go and read them on your own everything happened that it might fulfill what the scripture has been written about everything was written according to the scripture you know everything you know they took him away he carried the cross 
and Pilate wrote a title. Don't write Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews, but he said that he did it. And Pilate answered in the 22nd scripture. Pilate said, what I have written is written it. In other words, don't keep pushing me too much. He got his limits enough. So what I have written is written. See, that itself was prophetic, you know. He is definitely Jesus of Nazareth. He was called a Nazarene. You know? And he is going to be called the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You know? Book of Revelation, we saw that many times. Amen. Then the two soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, when they had crucified, the, the two soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts you know, to each soldier apart. You know. And also the tunic. Now the tunic was without the seam, you know, one whole big piece, you know, woven from top to bottom, you know, one piece. You know. So therefore they said, let us not tear it. You know. Cut it into four pieces, let's not tear it. But cast lots for it, you know, that it might be fulfilled when it says, they divided my garments you know, among them. And for my clothing, they cast lots. You know. It's one of the most beautiful scriptures you can read them when you go to Psalm 22 and Psalm 69. They are messianic scriptures, you know. Messianic scriptures. Psalm 34, 34, Psalm 22, Psalm 69. You know. They're all very important things you have to read. Very important scriptures. For example, uh, Purgatory. In Luke 23, 42 to 43, you know. Luke 22, 23, 42 to 43, you know. Truly say, I, I say unto you, today you shall be with me in paradise. You know. Verse 43, you know. And the, the dying robber had hope now, you know. I am going to be with Jesus. Do you have that hope? You know? And then Psalm 22, 1 says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And Jesus cried on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Psalmist David said you know, that the Messiah would call, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He prophesied it. So Jesus did it, everything on the button. You know, exactly like the, every scripture pointed to what he was going to do and what he was going to say. That's one of the scriptures fulfilled. You know. And when you talk to Jehovah Witnesses, that's the best scripture you have to tell them. You know. They say, look, Jesus said, my God, my God. Why do you call Jesus his God? You know? No. Jesus as a man filled with all the sins of the humanity, he prophetically what David had already said about him is fulfilling that. God hasn't forsaken all the people. You know. Neither Jesus nor any one of those who would put their faith in Christ. You know, because Christ is the only mediator who is going to die for them. You know. That's a very important scripture. And then Psalm 34 talks about how here they came to break the legs of all the prisoners. You can see them on the next page. And Jesus said, I thirst. And what happened? They gave him vinegar and also gall to drink. That gall, I went for the Greek word, that means roche, R-O-S-H, roche, which means it's a poison. He was thirsty. He was hungry. So what did they do? They wanted to give him Maybe the man is suffering. Let's give him some poison and let him die quicker. They call it mercy killing. Now they put people to death, mercy killing and all that. But here, that's a kind of a mercy killing. Okay, the man is suffering too much. Maybe let's give him this gall, poison, or hemlock. H-E-M-L-O-C-K. Or literally sometimes a serpent bite. You know. Poison. You know. So it's called venom. You know. You can give food with venom in it. <laughs> if you put a little poison with venom in it, what happens? They're going to die. You know? That's what they were trying to do. You know? So they gave me vinegar to drink, gall to drink, gall for my food, 
Psalm 69, 21 talks about it. They also gave me gall, G-A-L-L, gall. That is poison to, poison for my food and my thirst. They gave me vinegar to drink. That was fulfilled. Then they tried to break all the bones, you know, before, you know, the uh, soldiers, the chief priests, they went to, to get, the soldiers went to get permission because the priests wanted them. You know. What did they want to do? You know? They wanted to break all the legs of the prisoners because the Sabbath day is approaching, you know, the Passover. You know. So Psalm, uh, this John, the Gospel of John, the 19th chapter, look at this. They broke all the, it was, you see, 31. Therefore, because it was the preparation day, you know, the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath. For the Sabbath was a high day. You know. Jesus already had his uh, cedar meal or the Passover meal on the Thursday night. You know, as was the northern Israelites who used to celebrate, you know, the northern Israelites. Jesus was a Galilean, all the disciples too. So they celebrated it Thursday, you know, two of us that way. And then the people living in the southern part of Israel, that is Jerusalem and other places, they celebrated it because during the sun rise to sun rise. You know. One group believed the sun rise to sunrise. Another one group up in the north, they believed sunset to sunset. You know. Either way, so many Passover lambs would be crucified. You know killed you know, on the Passover day. You know. So Jesus met with the calendar exactly. You know. That was the sovereign connection to the calendar of events. You know. Every one of them you know, so mathematically accurate. You know. A flawless art or a masterpiece you know. like Michelangelo and several others. Not even one iota of information. You know. 1.01 .01 defect in a particular art. You know. That's the way here, 100% and you know, a perfect, only Christ. You know. One of the requirements was, therefore, what did they do? You know? No bodies should be left on the cross. You know. So they went to Pilate, the Jews went to Pilate, that their legs might be broken you know, and that they might be taken away. You know. So that when you break the legs, all would be dead. You know. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified with him. You know. You know, people would ask, how could Jesus forgive a condemned thief? He should be punished for that. Look at this, his legs were broken. Not only he was tortured, his legs were broken, and so he died. You know. It was a miserable death. You know. But his soul went to paradise. You know, because today you will be with me. You know. Where? In paradise. But when they came to Jesus to break his legs, what happened? They found that he was already dead. You know. They couldn't break his legs. You know. Not because they didn't want to break his legs, because the scripture says, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came out. That's where the pier cardium was scientifically, you know, water came out because he lost, all the blood was gone from his body. You know. That's why when you put that spear into the heart, what came out was only water. You know. It's a scientific research. I read it a long time ago. So scientifically, he was dead. All the blood was out. So what happened? This is the scripture. The soldier pierced him. In Zechariah, it talks about it. They will look on him whom they have pierced. Zechariah 12, 10b. Zechariah 12th chapter, 10th scripture. The later part of it talks about how they look to him whom they pierced. That will happen in the, in the middle of the tribulation. You know. All the Jews will look to Jesus. You know. they, will, they will look at him whom they had pierced. You know. Oh my God, we are the one who did it. You know. See, now we say we are the Barabbas you know, who, are, who are set free. You know. We put him on the cross. Then the Jews will say, it's their turn is coming. Look at this, we put him on the cross. You know. So they will look unto him whom they pierced. You know. We pierced him you know, and all that. And he who has testified it. So the scripture says not one of his bones will be broken. You know. 
That's the only reason, sovereign reason, they couldn't break it. See, for these things were done that the scripture might be fulfilled. Very important word. Everything was written about him. From Abraham all the way up. Abraham was looking for the celestial hope. And he got it. He saw Jesus. All the Moses saw it. Everybody saw it. Enoch, Elijah, so many of them. Isaiah, Zechariah, Jeremiah. They all saw him. So the most important thing is they look unto him whom they pierced. In Titus, that is why second chapter, it talks about how the grace of God came for salvation for everybody. God wanted to give eternal hope for whom? For everybody. And that was the grace of God. But those who received it, they became his children. And now we are those who have received in our context. At that time, Abraham and all the others, they were looking toward the cross. Now we are looking, we are looking back at the cross, you know, and looking to the future, you know. How? Looking unto him with a blessed hope. You know. And the appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is one scripture very powerfully and eloquently, descriptively asserts the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why do not be ashamed when somebody tells you, he's not God, he's only the Son. No, no. He's the great God and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Looking unto him, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our, finisher of our faith, you know, and we are looking for that blessed hope that is given to you and me by the great God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So he's the great God and he's the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't get away with it. He's the Old Testament Yahweh, you know. Exodus third chapter, Yahweh, Yahweh. You know. In other words, I am that I am. Yahweh, Yahweh. In other words, I'm the Lord God, Jehovah. So Titus 2, 11 to 4. The salvation has appeared to all people. And that is very, very important. That is why, do you have this eternal hope that God wanted to give? Does anyone whom you know who is struggling with this can have that eternal hope if only they can ask for it so let's go to the Lord in prayer. The Lord wants to give eternal hope through the Lord God Jesus Christ. You and I have it. All those who are watching, maybe down the road, if you happen to hear this, we are condemned robbers. But in our place, Jesus died. The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross as a man. Now he wants to set you free. Give you that eternal hope that you could be with him for eternity to come. Today, right now, you can be in paradise if your life is taken away from you. That is what they all experienced. Edward and Mr. Billy, Billy Bray, they experienced, he was about to get killed in the mine, but he escaped. It was the grace of God, because God wanted to save him. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to deliver this message, oh God. You heal, you save, you deliver people. Just like Lord, I told that man who was dark from top to bottom like a charcoal because he poured kerosene all over his body to kill himself. But people saved him, quenched that fire. Now he was on the prayer line. He wanted me to pray for his salvation. 
That was his second death, oh God. You gave him a second chance to be saved that day. You saved him from the first death without you, Lord. But you saved him now so that you could be saved forever. Lord, I will never forget this, oh God. I pray that anyone who listens to this message will come to terms with you. Lord, I am a sinner. I am that Barabbas. I am the robber. I am the one who put you on the cross. It is my sin that took you to the cross. Lord, thank you for this gospel message that you died for me as my burden bearer, as my sin bearer. Forgive my sins. Thank you, Lord, for dying for me. I open my heart to you. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving my sins. I put all my trust in you. You promised as many as received him, to them gave he power, legal right, to become the children of God. Lord, I am your child now. Thank you for paying the price of the blood that came out of your entire body for me, for everyone. Lord, thank you for coming into my heart. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Thank you, Lord. I believe I forgot that we have one more song to sing. The last one. What is it? 125. I don't know what to look for. Thank you. Oh, that joy to the world. That's right. Joy to the world. How could I forget the number, right? 125. Some of you may already know the song by memory. You hear it all the time on the radio. You hear it rest of the month. Continue to sing wherever it is possible. Joy in my heart. Let there be joy to the world. How? Only through you and me. Let's bow our heads for benediction. Lord, we thank you for the theologically sound Lord Christmas hymn, O oh God. I believe I read 11 Theological statements, Lord, that Charles Wesley used in this hymn. I believe, O oh God, our joy to the world, Lord, that whoever the author is, theologically it's sound, O oh God. There is joy in our hearts. We do thank you for it. We glorify your name. Lord, we thank you for the offering that is going to be 
placed, Lord, by your people, O oh God. Our tithes and our offerings, Lord, we give it to you, Lord. And you said, Lord, you are robbing your blessing by not giving. But Lord, our church has learned to give more and more. And we are more blessed, O oh God, because of you. Whatever we give, you return, O oh God, in so many ways. And we do thank you for the greatest privilege you have given us. So that, Lord, all that we give to your work is being used, O oh God. Not only here, but in Africa and everywhere, O oh God. We do thank you and praise you. And Lord, touch those people and place us, O oh God, where they suffer, O oh God. Persecuted church everywhere, O oh Lord. We pray for, Lord, the persecutors that they will come to know you. In all these, O oh Lord, countries where sin reigns, O oh Lord, let righteousness reign, O oh God. Let there be joy instead of sorrow in this place, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, just like Lord Billy Bray, Lord, we can keep repeating the sounding joy, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, to do that. Let the peace of God and the power of God and Lord, let your presence continue to emanate in us and through us. In Jesus' miracle name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus.